everybody. My name is Francis. I'm a program manager in Google Cloud. And today we're going to be talking about Chromebook adoption and how we get Googlers excited about Chromebooks. Uh, first, uh, we will be taking questions from Dory. So if you downloaded the Next app, uh, go ahead and post your questions there. We'll also take some live questions. We'll have time for Q&A at the end. So like I said, I'm a program manager at Google. And uh, I think it's safe to say that I'm Chromebook's biggest fan. Uh, you guys can fight me for it after this presentation, but today I think it's me. So uh, the first thing I want to do is talk about Google as an enterprise uh, and how we deploy Chromebooks internally. Then we'll talk a little bit about some programs that um, have made Chromebooks successful at Google. And we'll also touch on some of the IT administration benefits and some of the cool advantages of running Chrome OS at Google. So first things first. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Google's a giant enterprise company. And we care about a lot of things that you guys also care about. We are Chrome Enterprise's biggest customer. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those numbers. Uh, we do manage, like many of you, an ecosystem of mixed platforms. So we have Mac, Windows, Linux machines, and of course, Chrome OS. And another thing you might not realize is that we do aim to reduce cost and increase productivity with our employees. So thinking about those things and those priorities, that's one of the reasons why we love Chromebooks and why we love Chrome OS. From a user standpoint, these are machines that keep users productive. They're built for cloud. They're low maintenance. They're distraction free. And people love using them. And for the business, obviously, they're low cost. The maintenance burden is much lower. And the barrier to getting them out to users is really low. And so because both of these sort of enterprise productivity sides of the coin are well met by Chromebooks, we sort of set out to accomplish this goal, to have as many users happy and productive on Chromebooks as possible. And that's important because we could obviously just force everyone to use Chromebooks, but that's not really a win for us. Uh, we do manage an ecosystem of choice, and we want people to choose the platform that they feel they'll be most productive on. And so with this goal, there's basically three major things that we found were important to getting Chromebooks out into the population, getting users to sort of accept them and get them excited about Chromebooks. And so I'm going to talk to you about these three things and give you some best practices so that you can run Chromebook adoption in your respective organizations. I think the first thing, and I'm, and I'm sort of starting with you guys, that we needed to do when we started thinking about getting Chromebooks in the enterprise space was about myth busting. So, even internally, some of our users challenged us with, I can't use Chromebooks because they don't work offline, or they're cheap machines built for education, they're not built to do real work, and they don't have the applications I need to get things done. And so these barriers and misconceptions exist even with Google employees, and we still have to answer to some of these things. So if I could give you one piece of advice to start, the first thing you're going to have to do is talk to users about this stuff. The machines do work offline. I wouldn't have 512 gigs of storage on my Pixelbook if there wasn't something I could do with it not connected to the internet. Uh, they've got a huge amount of capacity for CPU and memory. I think you've seen that these devices range from entry-level consumer machines all the way up to, as you've probably tested uh, upstairs, enterprise-grade Chromebooks. And with the introduction of the Android App Store and a number of other applications on the web, the Chromebooks can do what most of us need them to do, and they do it very well. And so one of the first questions that we get when we talk about myth busting is, I can say these things to my users, but how do I really convince them and teach them that these aren't really problems with the platform or with the machines? And Russ is going to talk to you a little bit about grab and go, and that's one way we've gotten the devices in the hands of our users. That has been the most compelling and effective way to get people to understand that Chromebooks are actually a really amazing productivity experience. They're fast. They fit with your workflows, especially if you already have an affinity to cloud-based workflows. And so getting the device in the hands of the user is probably the most impactful thing that we've done so far in managing misconceptions. We've also created platforms for users who are really excited about Chrome OS to talk about what makes it great. The biggest influencers at Google are the peers and people in your working communities who know what your job is like. And so if another program manager comes to me and says, I've adopted Chromebooks, look at all these cool things that I can do, you should try it, it's a lot more impactful to me than seeing on some sort of screen that, trust me, they're fast and they work offline. 
And then, of course, the last thing is we do reach out to users and we tell them things that are new with Chromebooks and we make sure that they're always up to date with the latest innovation in Chrome OS and these devices. So busting myths, priority number one, when you're thinking about a Chromebook adoption effort at your org, definitely be prepared to face these challenges head on uh, and expect that there's a lot of supporting collateral for you. And if you check out Google's YouTube channels and some of our cloud blogs, you can see some of the uh, collateral we've created. The second most important thing, once you've decided to sort of face those challenges, is to make sure that people who are leading this effort are actually invested. So you can message to people and tell them and promise them that these devices are great and you can sort of get small communities and populations excited about them. But the moment that your leader who's pressing this sort of initiative steps on stage with a Windows or a Mac or some other alternative platform, it absolutely sort of downgrades your commitment to this move into the cloud. And so you need to make sure that the people who are in charge of this particular program are actually using the platform and excited about it. Uh, and that's sort of the second thing here is I think you can all tell I'm super pumped about Chrome OS. And that's an important part of getting other people excited about it is saying, I think this is an important change in the way we think about workplace productivity. And I want you to be excited about that and come with me on this sort of definition of cloud worker and getting work done without being dependent on a specific device or what I call this sort of legacy idea of local storage. And then staying in the conversation is really important. So Google's feedback stands up right next to feedback from our customers. We use the same channels that our customers do to escalate issues with adoption and gaps that we have for Chrome OS and Chromebooks in general. And it's important that we pass that stuff along. And so you will be given channels as enterprise customers to submit feedback and ask for help. And keeping that conversation alive and sharing ideas is what's making Chrome such a great fit for enterprise today. And so the last piece, which is actually the biggest and the question that I get the most about how do we decide who's a good candidate for Chromebook adoption, if we can acknowledge that our whole business is not well suited for Chromebooks, how do we segment our users into sections of people who make a lot of sense? And I think the first assumption that people make is they say something like, did you start with salespeople or marketing and administration teams? And, and that question actually makes a lot of assumptions that people's workflows are exactly the same. And in a way, it's answering this question, what is a cloud worker with a salesperson? And that's not the way that we think about cloud workers or that we think about productivity with Chromebooks. We think a lot about working contexts. So even though our first thought was, let's take a look at these groups that we think would be well suited for Chrome, just like lots of you are probably thinking, we learned that making those assumptions and generalizations about people based on their job title wasn't a consistent result. And so we had to actually sit down and think of dimensions that make people great cloud workers. And we thought of a lot of things, and I'll list a few. Do they travel a lot? What does their calendar look like? Do they use slides more than they use sheets? Do they interface with external domains? How much time do they spend in the browser? If you saw some of our earlier presentations around introduction to the cloud worker, you saw that most people spend five hours of their day in a browser. So that's a great indicator for us that these people are already comfortable working with a browser as sort of a window to their productivity suite. And so we think about people fitting into three buckets of adoption potential. This sort of challenge accepted group uh, is the first group that we think about, and they're sort of the easiest to eliminate. There are people who actually have workflows and working contexts that aren't well suited for cloud. And that can be for a number of reasons, and try not to jump to a specific role type, but think about working contexts and the things that people are trying to accomplish. So there's security implications or particular areas that people travel to uh, where Chromebooks are potentially more problematic or create fi friction for their workflows. And so our strategy for these people is to sort of document populations that we think can't do their work or can't do their work better on a Chromebook, and we escalate that to product teams, like I mentioned before, using those feedback channels to say, these are people that we would consider blocked in our organization. We wouldn't want to push them to this platform. It actually creates more problems for us than wins, but we want to transition them. So this is a group who's not ready yet, but the important strategy is to keep track of them and share this particular type of persona. Uh, this sort of like middle realm is where we have this unobvious group of individuals who we can't really tell exactly why they're not great candidates, but we know that it's not for sure no and it's not for sure yes. Typically people fall into this category where they're stuck on their old platform biases. So you might have people in your organization, especially if you have choice, that 
they just choose what works for them and they're not motivated to make a change. There's also people who have unique workflows amongst their peers and so you can't group them with some of the other communities that you think might be obvious. And so our strategy, and, and you might find that a large portion of your population fits in this group, is to do a lot of research and surveying and understanding of this population and asking them straight up, like, what would it take for you to use a Chromebook? Will you try it? We give them device pilots, we ask them for feedback. And then in some cases, when there's a strategic reason to move people to this platform where it's more driven by the organization than the user choice, especially if you're working in an environment where users can't choose, um, then this is really about change management. And it's classic practices of collecting feedback and making sure people are heard, and then ensuring that they can still do their work and providing them with supporting materials to manage them through that change. But then, of course, there's this awesome population of people, and this is actually a lot of the Google population, who are already working in cloud. They understand what cloud means. They're excited about working in the cloud. These are people who work device independent. They think of backups, and I forgot something on my other computer as sort of an old way of thinking. These people are in your populations, and if you heard our earlier talk, about 25% of your people are probably already here. They already work in the cloud and their workflows are well suited for that. Get them excited and teach them about Chrome OS and teach them how it actually is built and designed for the way that they're doing their work today. And if you give them a device and you say you should try it, we found that people don't want to give it up. It takes three to four weeks for people to stop using an alternative platform if they have more than one and they actually fit into this sort of already cloud worker defined narrative. And so for those people, it's really about just equipping them with the tools that they need to almost accentuate the workflow they're already doing. So to sort of summarize best practices around running adoption in your org, it's critical that you don't think about people by job title. There are people who take notes on notepads and really love an analog lifestyle that are doing the same job as people who are totally have an affinity to cloud uh, applications and workflows. So don't make the assumption that a job title means that all of those people work the same. Keep leaders informed and let them track and manage their own progress. They know how to get their teams excited. They should represent Chrome OS and what it means to their organization. So give them tools so that they can track and measure progress in their orgs. Keep the feedback coming, set up clear channels, and then elevate those people who are already excited about the platform, like me, uh, to avenues where they get to talk about it, because they obviously want to. Uh, so some, some numbers for all of you uh, people excited about moving the needle with your IT organizations. We have 32,000 active Chromebook users at Google, and, and that's growing. So those are people who we uh, programmatically defined as people using it as their primary work device. 80% of Googlers or Google employees work in a context that's well suited for cloud workflows. So that covers, for, if you can't let go of the job title thing, engineers and program managers and analysts and people who work in legal and sales, of course. So 80% of our team can be productive on Chrome OS. And when people switch to the platform, 89% of them say, I want to keep this. I have no intention of returning to my old platform. I'm super excited about it. And then lastly, from a cost standpoint, for every Chromebook we deploy, it costs about half of the other platforms. And that can be realized when we assign it as the first device. It can be realized when somebody's device is up for refresh or they switch out of cycle. We save an average of 50%. For every Chromebook that's deployed, we save 109 minutes in provisioning and deployment time. So if you think about the size of our fleet, every Chromebook is saving us a massive amount of work, even though some of them can be done in parallel. And lastly, for every Chromebook support interaction, there are three from a Mac or a Windows machine. So our users are seeing much less interruption for support and sort of nonsense around these legacy approaches to productivity platforms. And so obviously we're really excited about Chromebooks and one of the first things that I mentioned was getting the device in the hands of the user is a great strategy to get them excited. So Russ is gonna talk about grab and go. Great, thank you, Francis. Um, like she said, I'm here to talk about uh, Google's Chromebook loaner program called uh, Grab and Go. So to kick things off, um, I wanna go back in time a little bit and talk about why we even started a loaner program at Google. Um, it all started with downtime, uh, IT downtime. So 
IHS market estimates that IT downtime costs uh, businesses in North America $700 billion a year, ranging from uh, maybe a million dollars for a small to medium-sized enterprise all the way up to maybe $60 million, 60 million for a larger enterprise. Um, and the, the negative impact of that downtime goes well beyond just the bottom line. It also affects um, productivity, motivation, and corporate reputation. So this is a real problem. Um, Google has this problem too. A lot of the ways that we see it tend to be with broken devices. So maybe someone spills coffee into their laptop or they forget it at home, lose it, whatever it may be. Um, but this is definitely something that we've seen and we actually started out with a traditional loaner program to attack this problem. So uh, the standard rules applied. Um, someone would come to our help desk, they would say, hey, my device is broken. IT would provision a loaner for them. Uh, that would take some setup time. The user would go take it, get back to work. Maybe they're not quite as productive as they were before. When they're done, they bring it back. Again, another help desk interaction, they return it. And the help desk then deprovisions the device and gets it ready for the next user. So this really wasn't cutting it for us still. There's lost time at every single step here. And it was all for an outcome that really wasn't great for anyone. So that's why we designed the grab and go Chromebook loaner program. Um, this is uh, a, a fully stocked shelf of Chromebooks, fully charged, ready for people to walk up, take one off of the rack, sign in, and they're instantly back to work. We designed it with four core tenets in mind. It needed to be fully self-service. Uh, it needed to be quick and easy for people to get back to work. It needed to be just as easy for them to return it, and it needed to be available all day, all night. So digging into those, uh, to make it self-service, we put these loaner shelves out in high traffic areas of our offices. We make them very accessible, very visible. There's signage that we attach to them. And one of the really great things that we built for this program is a Chrome companion app that's pushed to every device in our fleet. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but the, the nice benefit that gets us is as soon as somebody signs into the device, we know they have it. So there's no need for our IT team to give it to them or to assign it to them. They can just take it whenever they need. Quick sign-in, uh, Francis and Luis are gonna, uh, they, they talked about some of the benefits of uh, Chrome OS, um, but with Chrome OS, you just sign in and you're back to work. So there are things like Chrome Sync that all of your settings and all of your apps, you have access to those, and Google prolifically uses the G Suite application, so they're right back to work as soon as they sign in. Super easy to return. You just bring it back to one of the shelves, any of the shelves, you put it back, plug it in, and it's ready for the next user. Uh, Chrome has this amazing feature built in where um, all individual user profiles are encrypted. So there's no need for IT to wipe these devices when they come back in or reset them. Uh, the next user can just pick it up and walk off with it just like the first did. And 24-7 access. Uh, mishaps don't really stick to a schedule, neither do we. We make this available 24-7. It's out in the open. Any of our users can use it whenever they need. So beyond the physical components of the program, the, the rack, uh, the charging, the signage, all of that, there's a whole bunch of automation that makes this possible. Uh, so there are four main pieces. Uh, the first is the Chromebook. I covered this already a little bit, but the built-in features of Chrome OS make Chrome OS uniquely qualified for running a loaner program. Uh, things like the baked-in security, the encrypted profiles, uh, the domain login, uh, all of that is uh, key to this program working well. The next piece is everything that uh, G Suite management, Chrome management enables. So we can push custom policies to any device that's in our loaner program, saying only Google users can log into these devices, or verified boot is enforced. Uh, so those things keep our devices secure, and we know who's using them. The other thing that that admin API allows us to do is push that Chrome companion app I mentioned earlier. That also happens to be the third thing that makes this program possible. So aside from telling us who's logging into the device, it also walks the user through the experience. Because remember, there's no IT admin there explaining it. So as soon as they log in, the app pops up and says, hey, welcome to Grab and Go. Uh, here's how you use it. Here's how you, uh, you know, return it. Here's when you need to return it by. All of those questions are answered in the app. And the last piece of this is uh, the management backend that's running and monitoring the whole program. So that Chrome application is reporting back to this backend. It's uh, running an app engine, like I said, and it's streaming everything to BigQuery. So all of our program administrators can monitor how things are going and see if maybe this shelf is running low or this user's kept the device for too long. So does it work at Google? Yes, we've been super happy with our loaner program so far. Uh, roughly a third of Googlers use this program uh, in a year. Um, around half of those users are doing so to work around a true productivity blocking reason. So their device is actually broken or they've forgotten it or they're traveling, something like that. 
The other half are using the program for uh, maybe convenience, so they don't want to carry their laptop all day, or they just need one between meetings. Um, and we also estimate that in its first year of operation, this program paid for itself in productivity time saved after only 50 days, which is pretty incredible. So why should you adopt Grab and Go? It keeps employees productive, plain and simple. That's why we started, that's why we're still going. Um, the use cases for a loaner program or a grab and go program like this go well beyond just loaners. Um, we found that it could also be a good management system for thin clients or maybe for frontline workers using shared devices or even just to get Chromebooks in your employees' hands. It's a fantastic way to showcase the power of Chrome OS and the ease of use. Uh, super easy to implement. Chrome OS has all these baked in features that make it very easy and uh, all of those uh, policies that you can push to the devices makes it super secure. Um, and then lastly, it allows your IT team to stop focusing on inventory management. They can focus on troubleshooting real technical issues rather than those things they don't really love doing. If you want to try it out, we made it super easy. Uh, there's a booth on the third floor of this building, uh, the, the grab and go demo booth. You can stop by, loan a Chromebook for the day. You can see some of the demo stations. We have lots of materials there and you can talk to some of the team that actually built grab and go at Google. Uh, we published a white paper that's available at g.co slash grab and go that details in maybe a little bit more detail um, how the program works at Google. And lastly, uh, all of our code from you know, the, the Chrome app to the back end is available at uh, github.com slash google slash loaner. We're also uploaded, uploading some of our processes, uh, the images that we use for signs and stickers, all of that will be available open source. Uh, so that's going to do it for me. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to Luis. He's going to talk to you a little bit about the advantages that Chrome OS brings to an IT team. Thanks, Russ. Thank you, Russ. So hey, um, one of Google's IT support techs, and I just want to talk about Chrome OS and IT operations. So uh, like Francis mentioned earlier, at Google, we encourage everyone to essentially pick whatever operating system that works best for them. So that means as IT support techs, we see everything. We see Linux, we see Windows, we see Mac, uh, and we see Chrome OS. And in that, Chrome OS really stands out as having huge advantages for IT teams. And that's what I want to talk about today. So what we're going to cover is it's really fast deployment and provisioning, how we uh, Chrome sync just makes it super easy for users and how we get way fewer support and attractions on the platform. So the, advan the IT advantages of Chrome OS start as soon as you open the box and we start getting them to employees. So uh, basically, to get a Chromebook ready, all we do is we enterprise enroll, we apply updates, and they're ready. Uh, we like, a, well basically, compared to other platforms, uh, Chrome OS, it provisions much faster. It takes about five times more time on Windows or Mac to get, to get them ready and secure and ready to sign in. So at Google, we deploy thousands of laptops a month and as a result, basically save our IT, uh, our IT inventory technicians a lot of time. So, and that doesn't end there. As uh, soon as a user gets them, they're up and running in seconds. With Chrome Sync, all their extensions, all their bookmarks, and everything else syncs in instantly. And because Chrome OS is what they're using on any other platform, or, and it's also the most popular browser, they're already familiar with how to use it. So as a result of that, uh, as Francis mentioned earlier, we see a lot less support interactions. It turns out that when less things can break, less things do break. And uh, encouraging Chromebook adoption ha is part of our strategy and how we scale IT support at Google. Essentially, when you, uh, when you normalize for fleet size, we see a lot less Chrome OS interactions. We see five times less than, than Windows and about, twice, about half as many as Mac OS interactions. So, and there's entire classes of problems that you don't have to deal with on Chrome OS. One thing that, that you don't have to deal with is essentially data loss or data recovery problems because everything is synced and because Google Drive is just built into the platform. It's pretty awesome. Another thing you don't have to worry about are updates. As an administrator, everything just works out of the box and you can set up automatic updates or you can control them. As a user, you also don't need to worry about it because they just download in the background and you just need a quick restart to get them up and running. 
And that configurability continues throughout the platform. As an admin, there are 300 policies that you can set your Chromebook. So essentially, you could decide what extensions are installed by default, what mode the Chromebook runs in, and you, you can tailor those configurations to your organization. Uh, the, another thing that you don't have to worry about as an admin is the security of the platform. Chrome is built from the ground up with security in mind. Uh, it's encrypted by default. It has verified boot mode and automatic updates. So it's just something you, don't, you generally don't have to worry about. Uh, another thing that makes IT people really excited is all the uh, like awesome new developments in the platform. The fact that it has Android apps on it and, and we're experimenting with Linux apps on Pixelbook is really cool for IT nerds like me. So another thing that's awesome about the platform is essentially that it can be used for way more than just laptops. We can deploy them for digital signage, for video conferencing, and a lot more use cases. Any time you need a small and cheap and secure internet connected device, you can deploy a Chromebook. So if you decide to go and get a huge fleet of Chromebooks, another awesome thing is that you've got Google support as uh, Chrome Enterprise customers. So that's about it.